Welcome to Distributed Systems and Blockchain in the News. My name is Thomas Bocek and this is a short weekly summary of interesting news that is relevant for my blockchain lecture at OST. So the first article is about on-prem versus cloud. It's the following article here. And AWS, the cloud giant, is acknowledging increased competition from on-premise infrastructure. Once confident that all workloads would eventually move to the cloud, AWS now admits that some customers are returning to on-premise solutions. In a statement to the UK Competition and Market Authority, AWS highlighted that building and managing data centers requires effort, yet many companies are doing so to factors like cost savings, resource ownership and better control over data and security. This trend called cloud repatriation has seen examples like 37 signals, which returned to on-premise while going from around 180,000 per month in cloud cost um, in the cloud to on-prem where they spent roughly 80,000 US dollars. So that's a massive reduction. AWS, however, disputes that it's losing a significant number of customers, while it says that 29% of UK organizations that switched cloud providers went back on-prem, but this includes all or any services. However, industry analysts suggest that cloud repatriation remains rare and most companies that leave a cloud provider switch to another rather than returning to on-prem. And my opinion on this is that such statements from AWS could be a tactic to influence the UK Competition and Markets Authority as it recently listed anti-competitive practices for cloud service. It's the following article here. Although I like building and maintaining on-prem solution, it's just easier to use the cloud, especially in a commercial setting. That means my personal stuff, I try to run on-prem. Anything that is commercial goes to the cloud. The next article is about Tor. It's the following article here. In this article, uh, a German it's in German. Uh, German authorities are claiming that they have begun successfully undermining the anonymity provided by Tor network, particularly in case involving the dark web. Through month-long surveillance of specific Tor nodes, they have managed to de-anonymize users via a method called timing analysis. This technique tracks the data packets movement through monitored nodes, enabling law enforcement to identify users. In a notable case, the German Federal Crime Police, the BKA, used this method to unmask individuals, and the investigation led to the arrest and conviction of a person. The breakthrough in this case came after identifying crucial Tor nodes and matching connections to real-world users. And these developments pose a serious challenge to the Tor network reputation as a tool for anonymous communication, especially for those in censored or repressive environments. Experts have raised concerns that such surveillance methods could be abused by authoritarian regimes. However, the Tor project remains committed to improving its network security, even though it has acknowledged that timing analysis attacks are more efficient when Tor software is outdated. And in response to these revelations, the Tor project reassures users that the network remains secure for most, especially those using updated versions of Tor. The attack described involved an old version of RicoChat, don't know how this is pronounced, a deprecated messaging service. Tor urges users to keep software current to avoid vulnerabilities and emphasizes that its network has become faster and more resilient 
thanks to recent improvements. However, the project continues to seek more information to understand the full extent of these attacks. And this is very interesting as the Tor project does not know the details how these persons were on Musk and they're asking actively for help. Here you can help to donate bandwidth and help the Tor network. Next is a YouTube video. It's the following video here. It's exposing the flaw in our phone system. It's about how insecure SMS is. I recommend to watch this video. It's the following video here. I'm not going to show the full video. Um, and in the distributed systems lecture, I talk about authentication and also 2FA. I mentioned it already a couple of times that TOTP, the time-based one-time passwords, should be preferred over SMS as the 2FA uh, option. And this video here demonstrates why this is the case. So I highly recommend to watch it. And in my opinion, on the one hand, SMS as 2FA is better than having no 2FA as it's possible to hack, but it's not as easy as demonstrated here in this video. However, it gives a false sense of security for high value assets. So do not use SMS even if the security settings suggest this. And one thing that bothers me, for example, is that Google suggests exactly doing this here in this security checkup. I have here a yellow question mark at a backup second step. So I should use my phone number so they can send me SMS. I already have here my TOTP and also I have backup codes, but they still suggest to add a number and I won't add the number since I know the SMS is not as strong here as TOTP. And the last article is a reminder that any cryptocurrency I mention, it's not an investment advice. I mentioned this in the lecture, in the exercises, and I have no idea if it's going up, if it's going down. They do some analysis here. For me, it's like a casino. So any token I mention, no investment advice, only invest that much money you're willing to throw out of the window. So that's it for this week. See you next week.